Welcome back to Jet Scale Models. Today we're diving into part 14 of our SDKFZ 234 slash 2 Puma build, where we're gearing up to tackle some key details on this beast. We'll be getting those jerry can holders set up, closing up the turret, and turning our attention to the headlights, always crucial for that battle ready finish. We'll also be attaching the radio antenna pot and dealing with some issues on the periscope to get everything looking sharp and authentic. So grab a seat and let's get to work. All right, so we got these. I've cut these all off from the photo etch plate. Got five of them, and they go with the uh, they go on pay or step 58. So I'll put up a picture of that. I can't show it right now because I'm kind of like in a position where I have to just. Uh... So this, the nozzle part, that will go up. All right. So I'm gonna move some of these away. All right. So let's uh, fold this up. A little bit it looks like that's the way to go and what you got to do is you got to fold towards the fold line so let's fold that up that up and just fold that one up and then we fold that one up well right okay and so these both go straight up according to the instruction sheet. Now on the instruction sheet they have the buckles this way and we've got the nozzle that way. What the heck? Hmm. Oh maybe uh yeah that's what's going on there. You gotta actually uh they're not just perpendicular. They have a little bit of an angle to them. And that one goes like that. All right, so we got that. But what I'm going to do, and of course I can't find that. So how do you tackle painting these straps? So I think to avoid, I think I'm going to not paint these before, but I think I want to get rid of the shine. So to do that, I'm going to use this stuff now. So we've got that. So as you can see, these things are pretty black right now, but it comes off pretty easy. But I think fold these up and then maybe I'll do a clear coat so that it uh, 
Maybe it doesn't flake off so easily. All right, so I'm gonna drop it in that solution again. And then once I've got these folded up, I'll let them dry out. And uh, gotta be careful. You can't bend these things very many times. Now, is that even on the right side? No, you see? Now I'm in danger of metal fatigue. Fortunately, it's not on a fold, so that's okay. All right, so, so maybe somebody else would do this differently, like without treating it and folding it. Maybe they would paint it or who knows, but this is what I'm doing. This is my theory, which is my theory, and I'm just gonna see how it goes. Maybe you'll figure out a different way. That'll be better, I don't know. But uh, I don't know if these are leather or if they're metal. I think part of it is metal like in real life, right? And then some of it is probably um, leather, like the straps. As you can see, this stuff comes off pretty easy, so it's not a silver bullet, you know, it's not a magic bullet. All right, so these things are uh, marinating, and I think I'm going to take them out, let them dry, and then I'm going to give them a clear coat, just see if that helps keep it in place. So I find that even though it turns everything sort of burnished and black and whatever, it's easily removed. For the most part some of it sticks but anyways i'll be back so i'll let those dry Yeah, you see, it just all comes off anyway. Oh, well. Well, of course, these are bent backwards. I hate when model manufacturers do that. Like, stick with the program anyway. So now I've got to bend these all back. Oh, what a nightmare. What a pain in the ass. So you can see all this shit is just flaking off. So don't buy that burnishing crap. It's just bull <laughs> Waste of money. Don't buy it. It's a waste of, it's a waste of. <laughs> all this shit. <laughs> God. I'm gonna go put some lacquer thinner on this stuff and clean all this crap off. What a waste of like three hours. I can hate that. I'm gonna throw it away.
Alright, well, there you go. Let's salvage that one. Alright, now that I've made all those mistakes, which I seem to have fixed, let's try and show you a, a, a clean one. What I should have done is I should have built one and then see what happens. Instead of like going through the whole burn burnishing process, clear coat, painting it yellow, and then having it all fail. I should have just done one. As well, I should have just folded one to see if it was the right way around. I mean, the instructions have it that this is this way. These little uh, these little uh, extension parts in the instructions are pointing down, right? But the lines of folding are on the inside. And that's the way you should normally do photo etch. You don't fold out from the fold, but whatever. I mean, Mini Art is a great company, but you know, I guess, uh, Maybe they need to consult with me sometimes. I don't know. All right. So this one's, this is way easier. It's overthinking it. There you go. It's way easier. All right. So, and then they have, once you got that done, you have the, uh, All right, so once you got that in there like that, you gotta make sure that it's taut, all right? And then put a little glue, CA.
Maybe that's not gonna work. Uh, maybe I could use a shitty old brush. This is not how I normally would do this, but I gotta fix it. Let's see how this is going to look. Okay, so they're giving you two types of lights. This is the usual one with lens cover. I just dropped it, of course. The other one that they give you is these ones. One has sort of like uh, lenses on it and one doesn't. Let's go with the ones that are smooth. I think they will be the most aesthetically pleasing. Hmm, I should paint that silver in there first, right? Hold on. Well, according to the instruction book, the color scheme number four, which is the one I'm going to do, you're supposed to use these open headlights. But as I went along with this project, I found a photograph of the actual vehicle portrayed in that uh, color profile and it actually does have the blackout cover type of headlights not these open kind so that's maybe a little incorrect Well, I guess I screwed that up.
While I do this, I did want to mention I've got a Patreon for this channel. It's a way to support your favorite content creators. People that make podcasts or videos like what I make or music or artwork or anything like that. You can usually find them over on Patreon. It's just a way to directly support your favorite content creator. So, if I happen to be one of those, it's patreon.com slash jetscalemodels. And if you do sign up, you get access to a bunch of walkarounds that I will be constantly adding more to. And I really appreciate it. Thanks to everybody who supports me on there. I'm basically retired now, and the movie industry is kind of really slow these days, and uh, not sure when things will pick up. The one thing I'd really like to get is another camera for the overhead shots. Not sure you know what this is supposed to be maybe it's for the antenna right so it goes the other way all right okay so that's like that and that's like that So I used a little bit of Tamiya glue to sort of hold this in place and then I'll come back now and I'll actually use some CA glue. All right, so we've got this box and there's some PE parts that can go on there. Let's put those on.
All right. I'm going to just melt a little of the plastic with this Tamiya glue. And that'll hold it in place. Right. Yeah, so that works. Because then I can position it. And then later, if I want, I can put precise. Pre I precise CA glue in. So when that sort of dries, I'll come back and put some CA. All right, what other little things we gotta do? These ones are meant for the f number four paint scheme. And that's the one I'm doing. And it looks like I screwed up and the silver paint has gotten onto the lens. So I don't know, I've got these. And I could maybe use these ones as replacements for the ones I just messed up. Now let me take a look here. That looks pretty good. And it's weird, they give you three <laughs> of each of these instead of four or two. Anyway, so they give you the mounts, one, two, three, four, five, six. I don't know, wouldn't you need eight? All right, so, all right. So this might be an opportunity to use some of this stuff to glue these lenses in. So what I'm going to do, get one of these little lids that I have, squirt out a little of this stuff, and um, Getting an air bubble in there that I don't like. Hmm. There's too much in there. So I'm gonna take uh, one of my Q-tips, soak out some of that. Get some of that out of there. I don't need that much. All right. All 
Okay, come on. All right. We're gonna let that one settle. And then I'll do another one. Okay, so this time, instead of trying to fill every of it, instead of putting too much in, I'm gonna just try and get along the edges and that will keep me away from getting all bubbly. got those two So I need to be more careful gluing these in. I should probably pre-bend these as well because the glue will get in that little notch there. And we don't want that. Ah.
Hmm. How many are there? Let's see. Okay, I'm going to put these headlights in. I hope they fit. Hmm. Looks like I'm going to have to drill that out. I'll have to mask these off. Ba -ba. <clears throat> yeah, so that worked. I'll have to mask off that centerpiece. All right, let's do the other one now. All right, so I'm going to use a little bit of the liquid glue. It's such a tight fit that that's all that's needed. I'm not even going to trim this one because I can come up underneath and cut it off there. So there you go. Yeah, and I'll come back and just trim that down all right so what else we got we could do all right this one here does that go there would they put it on there yep they would Shit, I just broke it off of there. Oh well. That's the thing about Crazy Glue and Photo Etch. It doesn't really glue, it just kind of sticks things. All right, and now, where's the turret? Okay, for this turret, are we able to glue everything down at this point? I think so. Hmm. I think I want to take these, stick them through the roof. If 
part. All right, I'm gonna just review my instruction sheet here. <sighs> See what we gotta put on the inside. Oh, we got the seats. Yeah, we better put the seats on. That one go there or there? Hmm. Ah, <laughs> son of a gun. Oh, shiza. What the hell? Huh? What the heck here? Damn it. Oh, man. This is not easy to do. Now, all right. All right, well, I got it in place eventually.
All right, let's take a last look at this before I close her up. So now put that down. All right, maybe I should take this off. So I'm thinking the power would go into there. Unfortunately, I didn't leave enough. That's okay. No one will see it. That goes like that. All right. So just have one more thought about what's going on here. Got the radio, got all the gun, all the interior stuff. Okay, I'm gluing it mother truckers because I want to get moving on enough of the radio stuff it's very interesting but it really slows things down man you know all right whoops a little bit of glue there. All right. Okay, I'm going to wrap a, an elastic band around here. See if that'll... Hmm. Risk of breaking everything. <laughs> I'll have to fill that. All right, and then these are for the headphones and throat mic. 
I guess I can actually stick them inside and then pull them out later. Okay. All right. So now we've got this little uh, thing. So I think I want to paint the back of that silver and that'll maybe reflect more light. The commander's periscope in the SD KFZ 234-2 Puma is the TRBLF3, a specialized panoramic periscope. This periscope was designed for a 360-degree rotational view, providing the commander with excellent situational awareness from within the turret. It allowed for a wide, unobstructed view which was essential for reconnaissance and battlefield coordination. The TRBL F3 periscope was also incorporated into other German armored vehicles of the era, making it a familiar and reliable piece of optical equipment for commanders. The illustration in the instructions is not exactly clear how that bag goes on, whether the slope is to the back or the slope is to the front. I think I do have that on wrong. The reason I mention this is because there is perhaps some conflict between that bag and the center ammunition storage box. I can look at that later. It might be that the slope of the bag should go this way, not like this. Okay, guys, we've got these. Uh, there's a few little items left to do here. Um, I'm going to put the tools on after I paint the general body camouflage because... The coaxial machine gun mounted alongside the main gun in the SD KFZ 234-2 Puma was the MG42. See, I wonder if this slope, I think it, this might have to be at the front because it's interfering on that front of the ammo case. I think that's what's got to happen, but I'm going to leave it for now. And yeah, you know, I forgot to glue this in to here after I put this on, so I don't know. Hopefully that's, oh well. So I put a little bit of that black uh, CA on these because that other stuff would not hold them in place. And now to polish that up, I'm gonna take one of my Q-tips, a little bit of this uh, Uncure, and uh, yeah, get rid of the excess. All right. So that one apparently goes there. Let me drill that out again a little bit. Now I don't think I'm going to glue this in because I think I might paint it like a wood color. So we're coming down to brass tacks. I'm not going to glue these in yet. Leave those off. And let's see. Well, these. Well, let's let's start with this one. This is the uh, the convoy light, is what they called that. I 
And I'm not sure exactly, how does that go? There's supposed to be like a little notch there, but there isn't. So let's, uh, hmm. I guess it's supposed to go there or something. Now we also have this horn here. The horn will go in here. Might be better to glue that on before you glue the bumper on, but I can still do it. All right, there's a little slot on the back of this. So of course, So I lost one of the exhaust pipes along the way, so I'll have to scratch something for this side. That's fine, because maybe I'll in keeping. Okay, so that's sort of, that should have a little bit of a slant to it. Now these are these are the smoke candle. These ones here, and I've got to put that on there. PE3 I don't need to put on because it's only for variant number three. So I'm gonna put L20, L24 on, and then I'm gonna look at this. I think I have a replacement for this. That will look a lot better. Okay, so that'll go, let's see, is that the short end or the long end would go in there? Okay, the nuts are on the bottom. Now, does that hook go up or down? Down. All right, so this, where's that one? Okay, that one is right here. I guess that's a pistol port, or does it just a, 
a viewport, I don't know. How does that go? Okay, it goes to the l l right. All right, I think I got one or two more things. I know I've got this part here to do. Where are you? This one, that goes on the bumper. Yeah, C20, it's gonna go on the bumper. This round, we tightened up some key details on the MiniArt SDKFZ 234-2 Puma. From setting up those jerry can holders and headlights, to refining the turret seats and closing up the turret itself. With each new addition, this Puma's character is really coming through. Next time, we'll be pressing on with even more intricate touches, so stick around. We'll be getting into some painting pretty soon. In the meantime, and in between time, that's another edition of Jet Scale Models. Y'all come back now. You hear?